It says, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are so sottish children. Mm. And the sottish is another word for stupid. And they have none understanding. They are wise in doing evil, but how to do good, they know not. We know that Christ is light, and as his sheep, we are dumb animals, needless to say, who need to be led to the light. Instead of choosing the light, the people of Judah chose to place their confidence in men, which was a big mistake. First Peter 2 and 9, part B says, they, that ye should show forth the promise, the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Instead of putting their confidence in man, they should have been praising the Lord and seeking counsel from him. We cannot put our trust in man. By that same token as Christians, we know that certain things and situations will occur and must occur in order for the word to fulfill itself because God's word will not return unto him void. So whatever it is we are facing, going through, our trust must be in the Lord. When we choose not to trust in the Lord, there are consequences. The scripture says, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and Naphtali. Lightly afflicted. Their affliction was so bad to the point of death. It was not too harsh, but it was still chastisement. Because of this disobedience, they were made humble by their enemies. And do we really want God to make us humble? God permitted this to happen as they had to be chastised. Sometimes we don't have to be humbled by an outside enemy. We all know that we can be our own worst enemy. God would allow us sometimes to mess our own selves up, whether it's making the wrong financial decision, allowing us to be our own counselor, self-talking ourselves, and our own thoughts, which only causes pain, depression, confusion, and so many other afflictions. Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We don't have any business around here trying to think for ourselves. When we go to the Almighty in prayer and ask for an answer, he hears us and he will give us exactly what we need. We need to hear from God in all situations of our life. When we do hear from him at times, We hear the voice of God telling us what to do, but we still tend to choose and do our own thing. And more than likely, it ends up in a bad situation. Psalms 119 and 71 says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statute. For many of us, when affliction arises, the first place we run to is to Christ. We run to the church. The Bible tells us in Job 4 and 1 that man is born of a woman is up a few days and full of trouble. So seeking refuge under the Almighty is going to be a continual thing. Uh Under that shadow is where and when we learn thy statutes. We learn that he is wonderful. We learn that he is a counselor. We learn that he is the mighty God. We learn that he is the everlasting father. And we also learn that he is the prince of peace. When Christ calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light, he has called us to live, but not just to live, to live abundantly. Now we've learned that the word abundance does not necessarily mean money. Abundance is about having joy. My God. Being able to have peace that passes all understanding. Abundance and happiness in this world without the things of this world. My God. The lesson says that Satan has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. This is a situation where the abundance of life is necessary and not the abundance of money. Jeremiah 31 and 33, the part B says, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. With this scripture, so under the new covenant, it's understood that we have no reason to have unbelievers. It's instilled in everybody, but it's up to that person. You have a choice to choose lightness or darkness. They still do have a choice, the unbelievers. They had a 